Yeah, milk, cheese, eggs, butter. Ah, hey, I gotta go. Hi, I have the new Rover UC. This is our newest detector from OKM. It is fully controlled by a smartphone. This is not a hiking stick, it is the detector. Welcome to the Rover UC video handbook. Here's the actual handbook. We recommend that you read it. In this video, we are going to explain all of the functions and features of the Rover UC. But again, if we miss something, we do have a handbook. I'd like to start off with the basic assembly. The unit comes complete, just as it is here. In order to use it, give a quarter turn off the bottom, extend the bottom portion of the walking stick completely because all of your sensors are down here and up here. You need the differential. Then adjust the rest of the detector to your desired comfort level so that you can hold it comfortably above the ground anywhere between 5 and 10 centimeters above the ground for best performance and operation. Now the batteries on this are very simple. You just take off the top here, you insert your batteries, Make sure you get them into the right position. The negative part of the battery, the flat part, goes towards the bottom, and the nipple goes towards the top. Just push the top on, give it a quarter turn, and you're ready to go. In order to turn the unit on, you have your multifunction button here. Take the button, push it, it'll turn on. As you can see here, before I turn the telephone on, it's going to be green. Green says we're basically incognito now, and through the headset adapter, it's playing the radio. So if anybody wants to check and say, why is this here? It's a radio. It's built in. I got my own built-in radio ready to go. The multifunction button here and the multifunction LED is going to tell you the battery status and everything else that you have here. For example, here we have we put in some dead batteries just so you can see it turns red when it's time to change the batteries. So pay attention to the LED also when you're operating the device because when it's red, it's time to change the batteries. Okay. So now that we have the green LED, it's saying the radio's on. So to listen to the radio, I'm going to take out my headsets, headphones that come with the unit. And all I'm going to do is insert the headsets. And by pushing the button, it'll find the next radio sender. So once you have a radio station there, you can listen to the radio and walk with it. And this way, if anybody goes to control anything, you'll be able to say, hey, I have a built-in radio. All right, what we have here is we're down here to the menu. We're going to push on the application there. OK, I'm over UC to get started. As you see here, we have the magnetometer, 3D ground scan, discrimination, browse scans, language, and info. Okay, the functionality is very simple. In order to activate a particular function, we're going to push on that function itself. Right here, as you see, it's going into the magnetometer mode. It's automatically connecting with the Bluetooth. And right here, the magnetometer is running and functioning just the way it should be. When you're done with a particular mode, just push on the back arrow and you return to the main menu. Okay, 3D ground scan, you'll push here for discrimination here. Browse scans here. Discrimination. I push on discrimination. As you see here, it's searching for the Bluetooth. Now the Bluetooth is active. And here we're going over a ferrous target. It goes up and comes back down. Okay, and that's basically how the functionality works. When you're not going over anything, it pretty much solves itself still. Okay, now I'm going to choose the function ground scan. I'll push on the ground scan. In here, I have my scan mode. I can select my scan mode by pushing on this, zigzag or parallel. For this particular example, I'll use parallel. So I touch on the parallel, and as you see here, it's returned up here on scan mode to parallel. My next mode is the impulse mode. Do I want it automatic or manual? By pushing here, I can select automatic or manual. For this example, I'm going to use automatic. Then, my field length in meters. How long is my field length? So, here I can just simply, with the finger, go up and down to select different lengths. One meter, two meters, three meters, four, five, six, etc. So, if I select four, it shows up here as four. 
as the green button here shows. And all I have left to do is push the OK button, which is right here at the very bottom of the screen. Push on the OK button. It's going to look for the Bluetooth device, which it has found it. And here is this new line. Would you like to scan a new line now? I can either push directly on the smartphone, on the Yes button, or I can use the multifunction button. By pushing on here, it's going to start to run a scan all by itself. When it comes to the end, it's going to stop. At this point, it's going to say, new line, yes or no. By pushing on the multifunction button, it's going to run all by itself until it gets to the end of the line. And then to begin your next line, again, the multifunction button, and the scan will continue on. When it comes upon a target, as you can see here, it's starting to come upon a target, you'll see how the target will then show itself off. There it is. And that's what a target looks like when you go across it. So there we go. At this point, you can see there is a target here. And this target is pretty much clear. Very simple to see. You see we have a red and a blue right next to each other. This would give it an indication of a ferrous target. So at this point, we're going to hit no. Let me do that again. There we go. Save scan. Would you like to save this scan now? Yes or no? I'm going to push yes. So now to give it a name, instead of using the default date and time, I'm going to push into this field here. I get my keyboard up here. I can push on my back button to erase the data. And I can let me erase the button here. As you see, there's going to say, if I'm going to say this is an iron target, I'll go I, R, O, and the word iron already comes up. At that point, I push on done. Save scan, yes. Now the scan has been saved, and it tells you the scan has, this file has been su saved successfully. It's very important that you see this, because if you don't see this, then your scan is not saved. Once you're done, push OK. You can view your scan now. You can manipulate your scan. All you have to do is select your operator, and you can manipulate your scan. You can see it in full 3D. You can change your view on it to look at it from different angles. You could zoom in or zoom out as desired to see your scan. Once you're finished with the functions, Push the back button to return to the menu. If you want to browse the scan again, push on Browse Scans. There it is. And it will reappear. Push the back button to go to the main menu. Those are the basic functions of the actual software. All right. Now, when you look up here on the top menu up here, you're going to see that there are a bunch of different icons. If your Bluetooth is not active, the unit will search for the Bluetooth automatically. For example, I forgot to turn on the Bluetooth, but I still want to do the magnetometer function. What comes up then is this information screen saying Bluetooth is turned off, but required. Would you like to turn it on now? All I have to do is push the yes button. At this moment in time, it's going to activate the Bluetooth as you see right up here. There's now the Bluetooth icon. And it activates with the rover you see instantly showing you the magnetometer function. Our designers and engineers have built this in to make simplicity a key factor. This is a very simple to operate. In the event that there's something necessary, the unit itself will cue you to say you need to do this or that or whatever is required at that point. To stop the function, just push on the back button and you return to the main menu. Okay, so now to begin our scans, our, our tutorial here, I'm going to push on the magnetometer. First thing it tells me, Bluetooth is turned off but required. Would you like to turn it on now? I say yes. At this point, you're going to see up here, Bluetooth is going to be activated. And here in the screen, you're going to see it is activating the Bluetooth. Once it is active, over here on the UC, you'll see that the LED is now blue. At this point, it's ready to go. And... As we walk with it, we can come out and see different targets 
Okay, I've turned on the magnetometer, and I'm just going to basically move the rover you see back and forth to look for any anomalies that are in the ground. Now, what is very important is when you're using the magnetometer and any other function here, do not swing the unit, okay? Do not swing it. If you're walking with it, you're not going to go and like you're walking. We're not going to do that. This unit has to stay basically at the same level and the same height. Move it back and forth, okay? This way you'll be able to see in the monitor everything that you're going to be looking for underneath the ground. Try to keep it at the same height. You're going to run into situations and circumstances where you're going to come on boulders or branches or trees or something else. Move it up and down slowly so that you have a nice and even measurement. Another note to make while you're using the magnetometer. If all of a sudden you notice that your values on the screen are extremely high or extremely low, the multifunction button right here, just push it. It's going to do a ground balance again. It'll rebalance itself so that you can start off fresh with good data again. Okay, so in order to activate the 3D ground scan, I'm just going to tap on the 3D ground scan here. I have several different mode options. For example, my scan mode. I can go in a zigzag or in a parallel mode. For this particular example, I'm going to give the zigzag. Then I can have my impulse mode as automatic or manual. For this example, I'm going to leave it as automatic. Then I put my field length in meters, which I can select four, five, six, and keep on going all the way up and down to my desired length. For this example, I'm just going to keep it at four meters, and then when I'm done, I'm going to push on the OK button here. Again, it's going to couple with the Bluetooth. Once it turns blue, it's ready to go. First thing that comes in, it says, new line. Would you like to scan a new line now? I simply say yes, and it starts. As you can hear the chirping, the chirping will tell you how far you're going, and you see it as you're going along. Once you're at this point, you can click yes or no, or simply push the multifunction button, and it will activate it all by itself. Okay, I'm going to select the 3D ground scan option by pushing it on the phone. Again, here I'm going to say zigzag, automatic, and my length of measurement is going to be 4 meters. I'm going to push on the OK button. The connection is being made right now to the Bluetooth. Once it's done, the Bluetooth is here, and then I look at the screen and it says new line. Would you like to scan a new line now? I'm going to simply click yes on the telephone or on the multifunction button. So for here, I'm going to set myself up so that I'm walking straight down the line. I have my grid pattern and I'm going to walk now by start by pushing the multifunction button. At this point, I'm going to keep the antenna at the same height until I get to the end of my line. Once I'm at the end of my line, I'm going to see the screen again that says, would you like to scan a new line now? I'm going to move to the left. Again, I'm going to push the button. I'm just going to walk backwards here until I'm at the end of my scan line. And once I'm there, again, would you like to scan a new line now? Moving to the left of my start point again, I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to continue this zigzag pattern until I'm all the way finished. Once I'm finished with the zigzag pattern, it's going to say, would you like to scan a new line now? Once I'm done, I'll push no. At this point, it's going to say, would you like to save this scan now? I'm going to say yes. So the date and time comes up as a default. If you want to change it, you can simply add your own particular name. I'm going to push yes for this example. And I have my scan on the screen. It says the file has been saved successfully. All right, I just explained um, the zigzag mode to you. So I'm going to do a second comparison here for the zigzag mode. And the way I'm going to do this again using the same exact uh, settings as I used previously, I'm going to do the zigzag mode again. And the reason I'm going to do it this time is I'm going to change the pattern on how I'm doing it. So I've already set up my uh, telephone here. I'm going to push the button and I'm going to start moving forward. Now, once I come to the end of this line, Okay, it's going to tell me, would you like to start a new scan line now? I'm going to say yes. But instead of walking backwards, through the built-in electronics, I can actually turn the unit 180 degrees. Again, I'll start off my 180 degrees. I will keep this setting here until I'm to the end. And again, I can turn the unit 180 degrees. 
in the event that I end up getting blue and red stripes throughout, that means I'm going to have to walk backwards. If my soil is with low mineralization and I can successfully go back and forth and turn and rotate, then that's a good way to do the zigzag mode. But if you end up with the blue and red, then you're going to have to walk forward and backwards instead of turning 180 degrees. But the 180 degree method does keep a tremendous amount of, or basically saves a lot of time in moving back and forth. So now, once you've completed your scans, you can actually review the data just by clicking on Browse Scans. So in this scan, for example, we're looking at a cavity or an area of water. To return, you just hit the Return button, again, to Browse Scans. And here, we're looking at a non-ferrous buried target. This one here is an aluminum case right outside of our office. You can come and take a look at it at any time. It's uh, about three and a half feet down, but that's sufficient. Okay, for this example, again, I'm going to push my 3D ground scan. Instead of zigzag, I'm going to do parallel. So I'll select the parallel by pushing zigzag was my first option. Now I select parallel, and in the screen it says parallel. Impulse mode is automatic. My length here, I'm going to select 4. In order to start, I'm going to push OK. It's going to establish a Bluetooth connection. Once the connection is established, it's going to ask me, would you like to scan a new line now? I'm going to say yes by either clicking on it directly or using the multifunction button. Prefer to use the multifunction button, that way you're not going to shake the uh, antenna here. So we're going to start off, push the button, and I'm going to move forward to the end of my desired run. Once I get to the end here, it's going to stop and it's going to say, would you like to scan a new line now? What I'm going to do, I'm going to return to my start point. Here's my start point, then I'm moving to the left. Again, I'm going to push the multi-function button to start my next row. And I will move forward at the same speed so that I get a good measurement. At the end, would I like to scan a new line now? Yes. I come again back to my beginning point. I'm going to move to the left and I'm going to push the button here on the multi-function button to start my next row. Once I'm at the end, then again I can start a new row or I can say no and I can save my scan. Just like previous, would you like to save the new scan now? Yes. And then again yes and the scan has been saved so that I can analyze the data further. Okay, another function here is the discrimination. In order to activate it, simply push on the discrimination. Again, it's going to search for Bluetooth. Once you're connected, it's going to turn blue on the probe. Now, by moving the probe here, you can see that it goes up and down appropriately. So, you have a, differences will be shown here. For example, right here is a ferrous target. Typical down, up is a ferrous target. Again, to show you this ferrous target, there you go. In order to stop the discrimination once you're done, just simply push on the back button and you return to the menu. And now for the discrimination, I select discrimination. Right here, it's going to couple together with the Bluetooth. Now, as I walk, I'm going to again keep it again like the magnetometer, and I'm going to search a area here looking for metallic, ferrous, or non-ferrous objects. So right here, I have a ferrous object. I need to go through both sides of it in order to see it. As you'll see, I'm keeping it at the same height. I'm not changing the height radically. I'm not swinging it. You keep it level and at the same height. That is the key to this detector in order to get a good measurement. If you're going to go and swing it, go back and forth too fast, you're going to end up with a bunch of false measurements and that'll cause a bunch of grief and a bunch of unnecessary digging. So remember, Keep it nice and smooth. Everywhere you move with this, smooth, and always try to keep it at the same height. In this area over here between the two buildings, we have a known tunnel. Okay? I'm going to take the rover you see and I'm going to do a scan over this area back and forth using the zigzag. 
mode, and I'm going to detect the tunnel. With the software here, I'm going to select 3D ground scan, select my options, and get ready to begin. As soon as it's ready, I will start. Okay, would you like to scan a new line now? By pushing the multifunction button, yes. Okay, at the end of my first line, I'm going to move to the left. As you see, I already moved the antenna. I'm going to turn it around exactly 180 degrees. Push the button again and continue. Again, I'm moving to the left. I'm going to rotate. As you see, I'm setting it directly on the ground and rotating it as I stand. Then I'm going to lift it up again, push the multifunction button, and travel again. Again, to the left. And I push the button, and I'm going to continue walking again. Move to the left again, and push the multifunction button again. So it begins the last line, because I'm running out of room here. And then I'm going to show you the tunnel. So, would you like to scan a new line now? No. Would you like to save this scan now? Yes. I'm going to push yes. Scan has been saved successfully. There's our tunnel. All right, so now I'm traveling down into the tunnel so that you can see this tunnel all the way down. From upstairs, we were able to detect this tunnel very quickly and easily. You watch the actual video. Here's the actual scan. It's that easy. It's very lightweight, simple to use. Because this is the result. When you're looking for something underground, this is what you're looking for. Don't make it complicated. It's already simple. In this segment, what we're going to do here today is I'm going to show you how to install the Visualizer 3D software and then also how to transfer the data from the smartphone to the PC. Okay, I'm going to open up the CD jacket, set the CD into the CD tray, it'll automatically spin up. Okay, the software opens itself up automatically. We're going to select Visualizer 3D. So click on that. You can hear the CD spin. From this screen, push Allow. And then you want to select your language. For this installation, we're going to select English. Push on the OK button. Then we're going to push here on the next button. Here's our license agreement. Click on I accept the agreement. I'm going to go Next. Then it's going to give you your path. Next. Next. Create a desktop icon. You want to click this. Click on Next. And then Install. Once you're done with the installation, you're going to see here it says Launch Visualizer 3D. Click Finish. It'll start the Visualizer 3D all by itself at this moment in time. 
Okay, once it starts up the software, you're going to see here that this, you get the Activate Software screen. Okay, after you've started up the software for the first time, you're going to get the Activate Software screen. Very important, when you go to activate it, that you have your CD key here and these 12 numbers here. You can activate it by either calling your dealer, calling us here at OKM, or by going directly to the website right here. You can click on that. Then, once you enter in the two numbers here, your CD number and this number, then you will receive an activation code. Type the number in here underneath, and once that is there, then you push OK. OK, in this segment we're going to show you how to transfer the data between the smartphone and the computer. We're going to take our data cable here, and I'm going to plug it into the top of the smartphone. Take it here, plug it into this side of the computer. At this point, you heard all the beeps. On the smartphone itself, what we're going to do is we're going to drag down where you say USB connected, you're going to push on that. Now it's going to say you've connected your phone to your computer, USB select mount if you want to copy files between your computer and your phone's SD card. Push the mount button. At this moment in time, on the laptop, comes up a box. It's going to ask if you want to scan and fix. Typical thing with Windows, just say continue without scanning. Then we're going to select open folder to view files. At this moment in time, we have the SD folder here. We'll click, double click there to open that. Go to OKM, double click, and here are your files. You can select any file to view, or you can transfer any file that you like. For example here, to see this file, it's going to automatically open, double click, to open up, and here is a tunnel. And it will show you all of the data right here, where you can manipulate it, turn it, twist it, analyze it, and process the data for future searches. Okay, once you are done with all of the data, you want to disconnect it. Again, drag the top down, turn off USB storage, go ahead and click that, and it's going to say before turning off USB storage, make sure you have unmounted on the USB host, turn off basically turn it off and there you go that's all you have to do in order to properly dismount once you're finished unplug it and there you go discrimination I push on discrimination as you see here it's searching for the Bluetooth now the Bluetooth is active and here we're going over a ferrous target it goes up and comes back down okay and that's basically how the functionality works when you're not going over anything